Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome back to the Lions franchise here in season seven. So hit that like button, and if you aren't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe as well. Now, we do start out this episode 3 0 here in season seven, and looks like Keon Knight is actually complaining about not being involved. He already has two touchdowns, I believe three actually, on the year, but he does feel like he needs more touches. So it looks like he's looking for five touches or 100 yards. But another breakthrough opportunity and a, a dev trade upgrade opportunity for another player. It is finally Marlon Yarbrough. He will finally also have the opportunity to go up to star dev because right now he is a normal dev trade guy. So he is requiring to have two touchdowns or 100 yards. So hopefully we can please both receivers and get the victory as well. So we are going up against the Bears. Remember, I do sim one uh, NFC North opponent and will play the other, and that's how I kind of do it. So I will sim one Bears game, play another get Bears game, play one Vikings, sim another Vikings, play one Packers, sim another Packers. It's kind of how I want to get through these seasons, and I do want to get through, you know, as many episodes as I can by also, you know, progressing through the season as well at a good pace. So we do start out with a big throw that time to TJ Hawkinson, and that eventually brings us to a third and three. Fields using his speed, and we will pick up the first down as he slides at about the 16-yard line. So now at about the 13 here on, on a second and seven inside the red zone from the shotgun. This time Fields throws across the middle. It's going to be caught, and that is key on night. He gets in for the opening touchdown grab, and it is going to be a 7-0 game here as Chicago does come out and put three on the board. And since we do have some dev trait opportunity, opportunities on offense, we're going to just play all offense in this game as here is Kerry Reedy with two big runs to start it out, and it's another first down. So under center this time. Here's a throw across the middle. It's Hawkinson. He's open. He's got a gain of 12. Justin Fields is 5 for 5 to start this game as we come out here in the pistol formation. Rolling out to the left side. Fields throws to the sideline, and there is the first catch of the game by Marlon Yarbrough, and he's playing on the outside that time, and a first down. It's actually his third catch. So from the 34-yard line, another handoff. Reedy has the speed. That's why you love him. He hits the hole, and it's fast. I mean, 95 speed, that's hard to deny. It's another first down. So at about the 24-yard line, this time from the shotgun, three wide receivers to the left side in the red zone at the 24, Fields. He's going to drop back to pass. He has a man to throw it to Yarbrough across the middle, but he decides to throw to Kerry Reedy, and it is short of the first down marker as they do pick up about seven yards on that one. But we do line up to go for it here on a fourth and five, maybe a little bit of a risky call instead of settling for the field goal. Fields throws across the middle, and that is caught by Dustin Revolt. Remember, Dustin Revolt was an undrafted guy. He actually started out at about 50, what was it, 55 overall? He's at 70 now. He actually has progressed really, really well. So here's a throw to the end zone. This time, Marlon Yarbrough, and it is going to be knocked away and picked off by Roquan Smith. And that was knocked away by Eddie Jackson. And that was a nice interception off of the deflection, trying to maybe force the ball to Yarbrough, but he had a little bit of a step. And now Chicago comes back out and scores on that drive. So now it is 10 to 7. So now three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Quick throw across the middle. It's going to be Galladay who gets open, and he gets enough for the first down. So Justin Fields does have two interceptions so far in the first half. Here he is throwing across the middle. It's going to be Will Blank, the undrafted guy in season three. He's now in his fourth season. He picks up a first down. So now at about the 11-yard line on a second and 10. Throw out to the right side. Here's Carariti trying to get to the pylon, but does get tackled right at the one-yard line, but he does move the chains. So now we get it to the one-yard line for a second and goal. Throw, and it's caught by Yarbrough. He gets in for the touchdown. He needs one more touchdown for that dev trait upgrade, and unfortunately that interception pretty much ruined that when he could have already been at it in the first half. So now towards the end of the first half, we do have one more opportunity. Here's a throw across the middle. That's Yarbrough again for a first down. 
So first and 10, 22 seconds left here in the first half. Throw it to the left side, and it's going to be Keon Knight who gets open, and he runs out of bounds and stops the clock. And now there are 20 seconds left here in the first half at about the 37-yard line. This time, Mack is coming off the edge, but a deep throw to the end zone in one-on-one, -on -one, and it's going to be picked off by LeBlanc, and that was intended for Keon Knight. But take a look. I don't know if he got both feet in bounds, but – Madden does rule him in. It doesn't look like that left foot actually got down. I think that left foot landed just out of bounds. But the Bears do get the call as now that play does stand and Justin Fields has thrown three interceptions in this game. So now we come out to start the second half. Here's Kerry Reedy starting out with a handoff. Another first down run for him. He's filling in nicely because remember Austin Eckler was hurt in the first episode of season seven. So here's a throw across the middle. This time, Keon Knight has it in traffic, and he almost has the speed to get to the end zone, but does get taken down from behind by LeBlanc at the six-yard line. So now from the shotgun, we come out in the tights formation. Handoff, Kerry Reedy. He has the speed. He gets to the edge. It's a touchdown for Kerry Reedy, the third year back. We traded for him last season, remember, from the New York Giants, and now he does make this now a 21-24 game going into the fourth quarter. So here he is on a handoff once again, getting seven yards up the middle. And he's over 115 yards rushing on 15 carries, a 10 per carry average. As now we get it to a second and two from the shotgun. This time from the 43 throw, and that's going to be, <laughs> I kind of, you know, geared that towards Yarbrough. We had an open man that was Hawkinson, who could have went for more yardage, but we decided to maybe hog it a little bit with Yarbrough. Here's a throw to the left side on a third and 10. This time it's Keon Knight. He gets it knocked away. And now we have it out at about the 33-yard line. We're going to line up for this long field goal with the winds to our face. And here is the kick. It's up. And it's going to be just short. So we miss out on tying the game up at 24. And now Chicago actually adds two. So they get a safety at some points. But now we have an opportunity to make it a two-point game as we do put try to put seven on the board and now we are down by five here with under two minutes left here in this game can we come back and win this game here's a deep shot one-on-one -on -one. Keon Knight goes up and gets it and that's great D on LeBlanc he is playing a really good game and now that brings it to a third and four here's a quick throw across the middle it's Hawkinson he's got it and he moves the chains here as now we move this clock under a minute left here in this game here is Fields from the shotgun. Great blocking up front. He tries to run away, but there's a flag on the play, so this play will likely come back, and it is going to be holding on our offensive line. So that big 20-yard run is negated. That's a call on the new left tackle, Trey Adams. So now we continue this drive with 26 seconds left now and a third and 20. Deep shot, one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be caught in traffic. That's Henry Ruggs the third. The free agent signing in the offseason, he does get us back to the 36-yard line. So here is Fields with the open man on the right side, and it's going to be Galladay, so he gets out of bounds. Now we have 14 seconds left here at about the 12-yard line. We have enough for about two plays. Here is Fields this time. Another flag on the play. Throw to the right side. It's going to be Hawkinson who gets out of bounds, but it's going to be a holding call again against the offensive line. So now we lose time and yardage, and now that brings it within five seconds left. We have one more shot. Throw to the end zone. Wide open was Ruggs. He had a step, and it's going to be slightly overthrown and picked off by Birmingham, and that is how this one ends. Chicago, who does actually make the playoffs literally every single year along with us, they come out with the victory, a big divisional win for them. And look at this, Yarbrough just short of that upgrade going up to a star development. So we miss out on that. And not only that, we lose the game. But Keon Knight at least gets his due. He will get the XP by getting him back on track. Khalil Mack had three sacks. Man, I'm mad that he's still in the division. I definitely wanted him out after last season. So now we move on to some player re-signings. We do finally get Rich Patton re-signed. He goes away with $61 million, and he is our highest paid defensive player right now and the highest contract we've give, given away in free agency to a defensive player at all. 
So Frank Ragnow, he's also due. He does sign the extension. So he is 87 overall, one of the best centers in the league. Vincent McLeod, we get his deal done. So he's locked up for three more years through his prime. That is a good sign for him. And then one more, how about Jelani Tavai, the leader on our defense, four years, $31 million, and he will sign it. So we get four of our core guys re-signed and we will be loaded for the future. We get them all signed pretty much in their prime as well. So now we are in good shape as we hop into another NFC North matchup, this time versus the Green Bay Packers. Now, they are quarterbacked by 69 overall, 30-year-old Will Greer. I mean, what is wrong with the Packers at this point? They should be at least building with a better quarterback because they still have their superstars. They still have Devontae Adams. He's 91 overall, number nine in the league. He is aging at age 32, but their team isn't bad. They just need to get a better quarterback. I don't know what they're doing here. They still have Kenny Clark, who's 29, 93 overall. Jair Alexander is 28 years old, 89 overall. And Darnell Savage is still there. He's in his mid-20s at about mid 80s or so overall. So here we are starting out this game at Lambeau Field. Here's a carry to left side and that is their running back Watson who gets in and he will uh, make it a seven point game here for the Green Bay Packers as now we had to play a little bit of catch up in this one. And now here comes Justin Fields out onto the field. He pump fakes the left and throws that way. It's gonna be caught by Galladay. I don't know what the defenders were thinking. There was a little bit of luck thrown on that ball. And now we move the ball inside the 10-yard line as now we are under center here with Fields. Kennedy Brooks behind him. He's going to roll to the right side. He's got an open man, but he's going to take it himself. It's a touchdown. He does tie this game up at seven apiece with his legs, and that's the danger with Justin Fields. He can also run the rock. So Green Bay does answer, making it a 14-7 game. I can't believe it. Will Greer is leading these offensive drives. Here's a run up the middle. It's Kennedy Brooks. He gets inside the five-yard line. So now third and goal, Justin Fields. He's going to try to get rid of it to the left side, and it's almost deflected and picked off. Intended for Keon Knight, but the traffic was right there. We threw right into double coverage, and we do settle for the field goal. As now we move on to later in the first half. Under two minutes left, Fields throws to the end zone off of a turnover. It's going to be a touchdown. That's Hawkinson. So we do add some quick points before half, and we get on the board as we move on to the second half. Now, as like I said, I want to kind of move through this game quickly. Here's a throw to the right side, and that's going to be deflected. Galladay on the other end of that one is knocked away by Kevin King. So at about the 19-yard line, here one of the third and six. Justin Fields has a clean pocket this time. Rolls to the left side. He's taking all day to throw the ball. He gets rid of it to Keon Knight, but it's knocked out of his hands, and it's going to be ruled a fumble and recovered by Zadarius Smith. So a crucial turnover as now the Packers come back out on this next drive, trying to drive down the field off of the turnover. Here's a throw by Will Greer to the left side, and look at this. He's 11 for 19. And a touchdown, actually not too bad. So now they eventually get it to a third and five. This time, Greer, all day to throw. Finally feeling the pressure, but throws the left side. He's got Richard Weiss for the catch, but he does not get enough for the first down as they move it to the seven-yard line for a fourth and inches. And they are going to play it safe, kick the field goal, and tie this game up at 17 apiece. So now we move on to the fourth quarter, 17-17. Here is Fields. He's going to throw to the right side, a wide open T.J. Hawkinson. He's got it to about the 13-yard line. No interceptions in this one for Justin Fields. So now at about the 12-yard line, here's a handoff. Kennedy Brooks up the middle in a big hole, and he's going to get another first down. As now we're inside the five-yard line, Kennedy Brooks has not had a huge running game at all since we've been controlling him. Only in Sims he usually gets over 100 yards. So here's a throw to the end zone on a third down and there is a catch and once again Hawkinson is an amazing red zone target he does not drop many of those and it gives us the seven point lead so now here are the Packers trying to play catch up here down seven points throws the left side and it's going to be tipped by Bryant's Ryan and that's a great play by the third year defensive end and we do eventually get them to punt the ball or actually kick the field goal 
and they add three, and we add three. So now it is 31 to 20, and now under two minutes left, there is an interception that time, and that is Tracy Walker. He's going to weave in and out, and that's going to be a touchdown going the other way, and the Packers cannot hold on. Like I said, that offense just does not have enough firepower to keep up with us, especially with Will Greer at quarterback. And look at this on this return. Will Greer just absolutely just trips over Trey Flowers, and it ends up being a pick six the other way. And we come away with another victory. So we have started out pretty well here in the season seven, four and one. And just looking at the game, Galladay, six receptions, 138 yards and a touchdown. Looking for back-to-back double-digit touchdown seasons from him. Keon Knight was quiet again. No touchdowns in this one. Trey Flowers does get a sack. And then Tracy Walker obviously had that pick six at the end of the game. And we come away with the victory versus a divisional opponent. So we do have a player upgrade, and it's going to be Trey Adams, who is replacing Taylor Decker at left tackle. He is 27 years old. Taylor Decker was 31 in free agency, and he walks away. We get a guy that is four years younger. He is actually pretty good at left tackle. Jack Spell has an upgrade, and I wasn't really sure about him going into this season, but I do like the idea of keeping development with him. He is normal dev, so he's not going to progress really really fast but I do like him he's 75 overall so Justin Fields does end up being player of the week in the NFC and then we go into our next matchup and take a look in another dev great another dev trait upgrade opportunity for Bryant Ryan so he is already a star development one more and he will be superstar but that's not it Kennedy Brooks now has an opportunity to upgrade as well. Three touchdowns or 150 yards rushing or receiving for him, and he will go up to superstar development as well. That would be a huge help for him as he's in the middle of his prime. And we are going up against a divisional foe. We sim the first game in this uh, series here. So we're 1-0 versus the Vikings this year, this year. And now we're at home here versus the Vikings and now we're looking to sweep them on the series. So here we start out with the throw to the end zone, a wide open Keon Knight, and that is incomplete as we were not able to get some points on the board in the first quarter, and now we start the second quarter. Here's a throw to the left side, and that's going to be Keon Knight who uses the speed, and he turns on the Jets. It's a touchdown for the second-year guy, and, man, is he making himself really known across the NFL, one of the best receivers in the game right now and he does get us to a seven point lead so we do eventually add another uh field goal onto the board now making it 13 and three but here is galladay on the sideline back on offense trying to put together a two minute drill before halftime as here is fields trying to scramble out to the left side he does pick up the first no flag on the play and it's a first down as we do call a timeout so from the 34 yard line this time justin fields has a clean pocket to throw the ball, but he's going to just take it himself. But no, he's going to throw it to the end zone. Wide open. Touchdown, Austin Eckler. Welcome back from injury. This is his first game back since being hurt, and he was wide open on that one. It's now a 20-3 game to start the second half. So here's a throw across the middle. This time it's Kenny Galladay. He's got it in traffic. That was a dangerous throw. That could have been picked off. But now we move the chains here to continue this drive. And now another first and 10. Throw to the right side. It's going to be caught. And that is a big gain by our veteran tight end. That's TJ Hawkinson. He goes up and gets it. And it's another first down. So at about the 15-yard line. This time the Vikings send the blitz. But a wide open Keon Knight. He creates the separation. It's a touchdown. And Keon Knight is already superstar trait. And, man, he has an opportunity once again to upgrade another dev trade if he does finish i believe top three in yards or touchdowns he does get that automatic upgrade to another dev, dev trade so that will be definitely one of our goals here in season seven so now it's a 30 to 3 game trevor lawrence back on an offense and there is an interception that time ali gray as we are just rolling all over the vikings they are probably the most underachieving team in our division because the Packers, like I said, they don't have a quarterback. The Bears are pretty good. They have Khalil Mack still. Without Khalil Mack, they would not be a playoff team. Believe that. They have not beat us at all in the playoffs so far in this series. 
And the Vikings, they have Trevor Lawrence. They have the number, I think he's number three rated quarterback in the NFL. He's definitely underachieving with this team as Justin Fields takes it in on the scramble. And that one seals this up. It is a blowout from the beginning. 37 to 6 ends up being the final score. You can just see we pass all over them. We ran all over them. I mean, it just wasn't even close. Justin Fields was flawless. 26 of 39, three touchdowns. Even Kennedy Brooks ran for almost 100 yards, four yards short. Eckler had 40 yards rushing, and Kerry Reedy had 40 yards rushing. I mean, we just torched them. And then looking at the game that Keon Knight had, his best game of the season, 10 receptions, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Just lighten them up. And Ali Gray has an interception. No sacks by our defense in this one. But Bryant Ryan will get the Dev Trey upgrade, not because of the two plus sacks or two plus force fumbles, but because the Vikings failed to get 75 yards rushing. So he will get the Dev Trey upgrade and he will now be a superstar trait guy. Wow. Bryant Ryan. I drafted him at 70 overall. Two years later, at normal dev now he's superstar dev he also has superstar abilities now the first one is going to be unfakeable so he will not be faked out by ball carrier moves and looking at him he has an upgrade as well so he will go up to 82 overall 12 overall jump in three years couldn't ask for better number 12 ranked left end in the nfl and he looks like a monster so next episode we will be going up in a Super Bowl rematch against the Baltimore Ravens. And not only that, but take a look. Keon Knight has an upgrade opportunity to superstar X Factor. But look at this. He has to get four plus touchdowns, 200 plus yards receiving or rushing. That is going to be tough to do. I mean, just to get one of those is going to be tough. And looking at him, he is a superstar trait. And he is the number 19 ranked receiver in the NFL. If anybody can do it, it's him. He's got the speed. He already has a superstar ability, which is the post flag elite. So he's tough to cover in those sharp routes, corner routes and post routes. This is going to be fun. I'm wondering if this is achievable. It might be, but four touchdowns, 200 yards is definitely tough. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Next episode, we will see if he will be a superstar X factor. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.